the Naval Push Alerts. New details tonight concerning Grand Rivers Tourism Director Russell Brian McDonald, who we learned is not only on the sex offender registry, but is accused of violating it last year. First, this is a story viewers reached out to us about last week. We reported yesterday McDonald's been on the registry since 2005 after a conviction on two counts of sexual abuse first degree involving an eight-year-old child. More recently, he faces three sex offender registry violations for playgrounds and schools, two in Lyon County, one in Marshall. He's accused of handing out cotton candy to children at school-sanctioned events last fall. Local 6's Charity Blanton has more details about those alleged violations, Kentucky's sex offender registry, and how the Marshall County School District reacted after this happened last October. This is Russell Brian McDonald's profile on Kentucky's sex offender registry. His most recent picture taken August 2022, just two months before he's alleged to have violated the registry's restrictions, outlined in this Marshall County citation. It says McDonald was here last October at Mike Miller Park, where a concerned citizen witnessed McDonald handing out cotton candy to children. I'm standing here in a playground at Mike Miller Park, but as you can see, just across this... I'm gonna stop this for a second. That's the very reason why right there, even in the form of an individual having no harmful intent whatsoever, an adult does not need to be around a strange a stranger pertaining to a child or a child does not need to be around a stranger pertaining to an adult. Even though you may have good intentions, it can be interpreted in a thousand different ways towards it being bad. I don't know if this individual is guilty of the crime that they're saying that he's guilty of. Apparently they're saying that he is. If he is, um, he needs to abide by the rules and it's really a very, very shameful thing that is that has fallen upon the Livingston County. And you know, you've heard me say before, I'll say again, that it couldn't have happened to a better group of people pertaining to a group of people that was trying to destroy my life even though I was trying to help them in giving out advisories pertaining to electrical disturbances. I hate it for the innocent people in Livingston County, but the fact of the matter is they have brought, they have painted a broad brush as far as I'm concerned with, with their, with me working with the volunteer fire department there in Grand Rivers and what went on in my life uh, shortly before the 2009, I think it was 2009, the, the uh, ice storm and shortly after the ice storm they have painted a broad brush. And I know that not everybody in Livingston County, the adult society, is, is guilty. Because there are some good, decent people in Livingston County. But there's also some scoundrels in there. And now we are scraping the bottom of the barrel and identifying just exactly who these scoundrels are. Now, I want to bring up something else that occurred in my life last night over in Union City, Tennessee at the laundromat. I had a busy, busy day yesterday. I wound up over towards towards um, Tiptonville um, having to take care of some things over that way and then last night whenever I come back into Union City I had a load of clothes that I needed to wash. So I went ahead and put them in the wash and went to Walmart, got a few things and then come back. <clears throat> While I'm sitting there for my, I done already had my clothes washed now I've got them in the dryer. Um, I don't have a decent washer and dryer out here. I did have a washer, but I, I, it's the belt or something's come off of it. But um, I'm sitting there drying, and all of a sudden this young girl comes in there, popping up in front of me, questioning me whether or not I've been filming her. Are people like her over in Kenton, Tennessee? I said, ma'am, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Just a young girl, probably wasn't no older than maybe 20, 21 years old. May not even been that old. I don't know. Um, her her uh, uh, attire that, that she was wearing was skimpy looking and then all of a sudden a, a white dude comes in and all of a sudden another white dude comes in and then all of a sudden a Mexican dude comes in and I could tell real real quick that these people definitely had an attitude and 
I don't know who had fed them a bunch of stuff about me recording women in Kenton, Tennessee, or girls in Kenton, Tennessee, but it's kind of like what, I, what my brother and I was going through back a few years ago by a guy that was driving around here uh, falsely accusing me of being a pedophile. Last night, I was being accused of a pedophile again. Ped pedophilia. And where this is coming from has to be from the very pits of hell because I've never had any type of record of being any close of any type of pedophile. Matter of fact, I'll go out of my way. I'll take on felonies to go out of my way to make sure that children are taken care of rather than children being abused. So as far as I'm concerned, what those people was talking about last night pertaining to me being a pedophile, they were so off base and if people are so gullible and naive that they're going to believe any and everything that people has to tell them, either on the internet or by mouth, then odds are I don't need to be around that, that type of people to begin with because you could tell them that the sun is purple and they're going to believe it. You could tell them uh, anything and they're going to believe it. I don't need to be around people like that. I don't want to be around people like that. I want to be around good, sound, sound-minded people that has enough sense that before they go to spewing out something like that, that they're willing to at least, you know, under the under the uh, um, under the the, the 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 right to no act of going and and doing some homework and, and finding out whether or not the individual that you're falsely accusing is in fact or has, in fact, committed that type of charge. Whenever I was a teenager, I may have done something uh, that was inappropriate considering me being a teenager uh, with another teenager. Um, I don't really think that that occurred, but it, it, it's a possibility because we've all made mistakes, when, especially whenever we were just in, in pu pubular state. Um, but since I have become an adult, I have always, always known the distances between adults and children, and unless you're associated with that group, kind of like a church group, or a VFW group, or you're at a homecoming, or some other type of, of sports group that where everybody knows everybody, unless you're around a group odds are you probably need to remain your distance between children because that is an area that can get you in trouble even innocently even innocently by people trying to be too either nice or gun ho now back whenever I was growing up as a child it was nothing uncommon for some elderly person to walk up and maybe hand somebody a dime or maybe hand somebody a quarter or maybe they would actually reach and, and get them a a, a, a a piece of chewing gum or something like that. That was pretty common back then. But today with this all this pedophile stuff going on and all the other stuff going on, if you're so naive that you're going around messing with, with uh, children that you don't know anything about them and they don't know anything about you, you are setting yourself up for a major, major bad event that could materialize into something even worse than what you could ever ever begin to imagine and to be quite honest with you it's about that bad with people's animals it don't matter if you have your own animal um, I know over here in tractor supply over here in Martin Tennessee people bring their animals in there all the time it's animal friendly uh, business but sometimes you can meet up with people that are kind of halfway out there you know I'm not saying that they're flaky or whatever but they're different and if you go up to touch the animal pet the animal uh, be kind or nice to the animal some of these people can absolutely interpret that in the wrong way we are dealing in perilous times just as the Bible talks about in the last days and we're dealing with so many different insert uncertainties I feel sorry for the people, the good people in Livingston County, Kentucky. I really do. I feel sorry for the people 
the majority of the people there in Grand Rivers, Kentucky, but I do know the leadership of the fundamental pillars of that society over there because I've dealt with them for so long, and I do know that uh, they've had some very, very creepy criminal type people that have discharged their lives in and out of other people's lives over there illegitimately just basically based upon usually their financial status. I do commend the state of Kentucky towards them making these files public pertaining to this individual and to be quite honest with you if he has violated his agreement in some sort of way if he has deliberately done something that he should not have done, knowing that he shouldn't have done it, well then he needs to uh, he needs to be be held accountable for for uh, for that. Because whenever it comes to kids, that's one of the biggest no nos that you do not want to ever ever brush up against or be questioned about, especially under the pretense of a pedophile or kidnapping or any of the above. This hill here is where Sheriff Matt Hilbrick said in this citation that Russell McDonald was set up helping serve cotton candy at last year's Boobash. On this soccer field, just 293 feet from a playground. The citation says McDonald was working with vendor Cotton Candy Creations. Kentucky law concerning the sex offender registration outlines those on it cannot be within 1,000 feet of several facilities where children may be present, including publicly owned or leased playgrounds except with advanced written permission. The citation reads he did not get that. It also says he was present for another event last fall for <coughs> Benton Elementary, held off campus. Marshall County School Superintendent Steve Miracle says the district is required by state law to conduct background checks on employees and volunteers. They don't on vendors. Yesterday, we attempted to speak with McDonald. He locked the Grand Rivers Tourism Office when we got there. Mayor Tom Moody says the Tourism Commission Board hired McDonald and conducted a background check. He wouldn't provide us with their names or contact information to verify that. Charity Blanton, WPSD Local 6. Well, we reached back out to Lyon County Superintendent today regarding the two registry violation charges McDonald faces there. He hasn't gotten back to us yet. Yesterday, he said they are aware of what happened at a PTO-sponsored event for the elementary school that likely would have been held on campus. It is district policy to conduct background checks for school events. It's unclear if McDonald alerted the district that he'd be there. McDonald is due in court twice for pretrial conferences in the next two weeks. On August 9th in Lyon County, on two charges of violating the sex offender registry concerning playgrounds and schools. And on August 14th, he'll be in court on the Marshall County violation charge concerning playgrounds. Continuing coverage on the death of 18-year-old Mercedes Culligan. She was killed in a hit and run earlier this morning. It happened on the shoulder. He'll be in court on the Marshall County violation charge concerning playgrounds. Once more, this individual that's had these problems, I don't know whether or not it was authentic or not. Apparently, they're saying that it was. He's an adult, and I'm guessing within his right mind, if he has done this, in which apparently he, he has done, then he is in violation of the Kentucky um, principles pertaining to this type of charge. That's the reason why that I was very, very adamant in not contacting land between the lakes during the time of my probation period, which was a two-year period. And it didn't matter, just like the, the federal judge told me in Paducah, Kentucky. He said, it don't matter, Mr. Jackson, if you call them, if you write them a letter, if you text them, if you send them a smokestack message. You are not to have no, absolutely 
none dealings with anybody in LBL. It actually reached the point that I questioned the judge. I go, well, judge, what if I'm, I'm traveling and I got to come through this particular area? He said, my suggestion would be to make a telephone call to make sure that we're aware that you're in the area. Because at that time, I was on probation. I waited my probation period out. I made one telephone call to the office in the land between the lakes. I hung the telephone call up. The telephone call was in a non-threatening manner. It was in an apologetic form. And I did not contact anybody else for the next approximately 90 days. 90 days into that wait, after I took care of my problems that I was dealing with in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, by hiring an attorney, Jay Silvernail, having to go about six different times in front of their prosecuting attorney before they finally throw the charges out, which even to this day is still not validated on their Oklahoma media broad, uh, open um, broadcast uh, public awareness. It, it, it never, that I know of, put in clarification that the charges was thrown out. As far as I know, they still got charges. They still got, they still got written documentation on a lot of their uh, you, uh, YouTube or or, or uh, social media platforms in indicating that I had been charged for threatening one of their Oklahoma police officers, but it never said any any of the of the stuff that he got thrown out. Now I did say that Mr. Jackson denies all guilty offenses. It did say that. I'll give him that. Pertaining to the Oklahoma media. But that just goes to show you how unjust and how inadequate the truth is pertaining to various either local, state, or federal media institutions because they only want to tell certain portions of the truth and not the whole truth to the public because they done already gave me a black eye in, in stating to the public that I was out of touch with reality even though I was the one that was in touch with reality towards it being a government cover up out there pertaining to the Timothy McVeigh ordeal that happened uh, with them with them people out there them poor people out there that, that had to die uh, during the time that they went through what they went through but it just goes to show you, just like the Kentucky New Era up around Hopkinsville, Kentucky, whenever I was staying in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, because Trigg County, Kentucky didn't have a jail, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, new, the New Kentucky Era puts out a six or a seven um, column front page indicating any and everything about my case. But, but broadened it out to the point that they brought up all kinds of stuff about um, the incident that happened in my life out in Oklahoma, and they even stretched the truth to the point of just tell, telling a barefaced lie about that I had threatened a state trooper here in the state of Tennessee, and as far as I know to this day, there's never been any type of, of uh, confirmation on what the Kentucky New Era printed up in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. And it's as if these people that has the right to the pencil and paper or, or the typewriter or, or the social media platforms, it's as if that they can type up whatever they want to type up to, to whoever that they want to type it up about and there ain't going to be no repercussions in what they've typed up. Especially knowing the information that's put out there is nothing more than a heinous lie. I've never seen the professional perspective of people and, and people's positions being so tainted as what it is today in the year 2023 here in America towards basically the media just basically being able to do whatever that they want to do to whoever that they want to do it to and there ain't no and there ain't no uh, uh, complications or there ain't no uh, consequences on account of it. I've never seen anything like this.
But the fact of the matter is, I did have a great deal of dealings in Livingston County, Kentucky. And I had also some dealings with some people over in Paducah, Kentucky. I also had some dealings in doing some free humanitarian work over in the Mayfield area. And I also had some dealings with law enforcement over in the Murray, Kentucky area. I don't know all these counties. I don't study them every day like I do over here in, in, in uh, Tennessee. Um, but I'm just telling you, for clarification purposes, if a person has a good heart today and wanting to help children, it can actually backfire on them in giving them a quarter, a dollar, a piece of cotton candy. It can be misinterpreted the wrong, wrong way in today's society. It can be misinterpreted. Now, if I didn't have proof that I had made a tell, my brother and I had made a telephone call to Nashville, Tennessee, pertaining to the child abuse center, and if I didn't have proof that a telephone call was made in Weekly County, Tennessee, pertaining to the child abuse center, then I wouldn't have no grounds to stand upon towards what was my initial concern about the family across the road that was written from the tenant that I was having so much trouble out of. And if people can't put two and two together in understanding that, that the, the owner of that property over there was using those people, uh, we we basically weaponizing the people and weaponizing the, the ground over there um, to destroy me or, or to hurt me, if people can't understand that, then obviously they can't see the trees for the forest to begin with. And I know I'm kind of mixing things up a little bit right here, but the fact of the matter is I did have some very, very cruel misunderstandings with some people in not only Land Between the Lakes, but up around Calvert City, up around Grand Rivers, down towards uh, where the Ohio River is. I don't forgot the name of that community down in there. Um, Carsville or something like that. And I had some dealings with some people in Paducah, Kentucky, whenever they decided that they was going to apprehend my truck, even though I went to a psychiatrist doctor and the psychiatrist doctor gave me a clean bill of health. It still wound up costing me almost two hundred dollars plus the inconvenience of of, uh, of going through all the all the mishandles, mis uh, professional mishandles that that I went through. In addition, towards what went on over in the county where Murray, Kentucky is, over in Aurora, Kentucky, where I almost lost my liberty once more again. Whenever you have this much illegitimacy going on in the same area again and again and again, maybe certain federal people need to investigate the investigators to find out how come that they didn't catch something like this with this individual. Somebody should be held accountable that the, the ball got dropped because everybody, especially the children's life that that individual was around, as far as I'm concerned, was jeopardizing their lives. And that's whenever the mothers and the fathers, the parents, and the professional people should speak up about, well, who dropped the ball on this? I'm going to let that go at that. Good luck to all of us. I pray for Livingston County. I pray for the people up in Kentucky. I pray for Tennesseans. I pray for our great nation. I pray for the planet every day. I pray that God be merciful unto me as a sinner because I know that, that none of us is sinless. We've all made mistakes, but that's the the beauty part of being able to go to the cross towards being liberated through the blood of Christ because it says whosoever shall calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved thank you God bless you God bless America God bless our troops and heaven help us all Shalom